Good evening all. Welcome back. The Hair Show. We're here. And I'm already seeing many of our regular community in there. Shall we flag up a few of you? Who have we got in here? So big highs. Lynette, nice to see you there. We've got Kim there. Oh, Sarah's there. How you, Sarah? We've got the sassy girl. How you doing, Sophie? So we'll be flagging up lots of comments because this is the live talk show dedicated to hair professionals this is our weekly hangout every monday we are here to bring the news what's going on in your hair well what's the kind of stuff that we are all talking about and we've been watching the week and there's been some big conversations going on there right now so the first thing that i'm going to say to you all is make sure that you share this show let's light up facebook like it love it and throughout the show the comments are coming in there i am looking up the screen so when you see me there i see them comments coming in could be flagging up so any questions that you're going to be wanting to talk about tonight put them in there because it's really is that's what this is we're kind of saying this is kind of the two loose women and one man one loose man we'll say in the middle and, and that's our show here so this is what we're going the direction we had a great show last week we really enjoyed it and you know seeing all you regular faces in here it, it's what makes it all about there's pivot point you guys great always sharing the show big shout out to you uh, my good friend there jez always great i think jez is up for a bit of debate tonight i've got that feeling alina there she is how are you our lovely cypriot lady and there's brooke congratulations brooke on your british business hair awards uh, finalist status great to see so are we ready for what's coming up in tonight's show so let's do it let's get to it have we got a bit of music on there let's see if we can get the music on where's the music i oh, will forget the music if i can't see it no i'm gonna have the music because i like the music there we go there we go right so we're going to be kicking off with world hair news Giordana cabella she's picking the stories she's going to be bringing that to you hairdressing horror stories these three great stories from Georgia Bell. Uh, one I always look forward to. You never know what you're going to quite get there. We have the gorgeous Cherie Thompson. She's back for a rock up and share. She's got a lovely hairstyle for you. How to cut it podcast. Yeah, one I had with Simon Townley. And tonight, again, it's going to be a good old chat with everything in the week of a hairdresser's life. All right. The things that we want to talk about as a professional. Yeah, we can have our moans and groans here. So there's going to be lots and lots of things that are going to be going on. So make sure to share that. So we are going to bring in... This hair show wouldn't be complete without them, would it? They're sat there waiting. I can see them both over here. Hey, ladies. You ready to come onto the screen? Jordana Cabella, Georgia Bell, let's give them a big hello. Welcome in. Good evening. Hey, evening. everyone. Hey, everyone. Hey, you... <laughs> George, you've got a lovely chair, haven't you, there? We shared a picture of that on Instagram. Yeah, Can my you... chair actually matches my shirt. It's uh, super tacky, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> so great. Uh, uh, where are we all... Me. I think what's really quite good to share with everybody, actually, is uh, where we all are right now. I mean, so, Jordana, where are you based from when we're doing these live nights? I'm in sunny Croydon, which is south southeast London. It's kind of on the cusp of Surrey and London. Um, my brother's just in that area too. And George? I am sat in my porch at Costa del Rotherham. <laughs> <laughs> Let us all know. Where are you watching the show tonight? Yeah, that's always a great thing. So get into this show i'm gonna have a look through your comments as we go in uh let's have a look he's here george lee lee b he's there oh, he's hey how hey, you doing lee, lee. Great our, to see. our fan our fan we love lee robert's there as well good to see you robert we've got samantha so we're going to keep going through all these comments tonight and like i say if you've got a conversation is there something that's been grating you a little bit in terms of conversations because we've picked out some topics that we want to talk about tonight haven't we ladies and um George, what's one of them we're going to be talking about tonight? Oh, well, do you know what? I've had a few Karens this week, so one of the topics is nightmare clients. Um, I don't know how you guys are experiencing that, if you've had any problems yourselves. Uh, but this week's been mentally quite trying, mentally quite draining. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about that, definitely. Yeah. What else, Jordana? What else have we got lined up? I've got some geeky statistics to share with you about recruitment, the number of people yeah. joining hairdressing. Yeah. 
and um, some campaigns for the NHF as well. Yeah, do it right campaign. So we've been watching a lot of the conversations that have really been going off in the How to Cut It hairdressing community as well. And that really helps us inspire our conversations because it's the weak sort of topics that we really want to cover in here because as hairdressers and barbers it's a place where we want to really you know share things together and sometimes you're not alone but but the world hair news i think somebody's already put this in jordan i'm just gonna let me see if i can bring this up sophie miss sass love you guys i've got news i'm as sassy as hell well jordan has <laughs> got this <laughs> You it are as sassy like, as hell, like, I tell you. Sophie B, week, right? you are uh, trouble. So anyway, Jordana's got news. So we're going to go into World Hair News with Jordana Cabela. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the world of hair news. Now today's topic, news topic number one, do you know your industry? Here are some insightful statistics that we have gathered from the National Hairdressers Federation. The growth in the number of hairdressers, barbers and beauty businesses over the past five years has been a massive, staggering 45% increase. Now, this means established salons are facing levels of competition which have never been seen before. 83% of hairdressers are female, according to the NHF, and 77% of salons survive their first five years of opening. 54% of people who work in hairdressing and barbering are self-employed, leaving behind 46% as employed. Now between 2017 and 2019, a drop of 13% of people are enrolling in the National Hairdressers Apprenticeship Scheme. We think this is due to changes in the apprenticeship standards and funding. News topic number two. A new organisation entitled We Are Unity has been launched as the first of its kind. Originally founded by Thomas Freer and Tegan Robertson, this is his first creative collection, Striving for Cultural Change Within the Industry. It has become his mission to spread the power of positivity and uplift those who are in need of help and searching for more equality in the workplace. You can find out more about them by heading over to their Instagram page, underscore we are unity with two T's. And in new topic number three, with warnings from government officials that we could face closure if we do not abide by the rules, the NHF have launched a campaign in hope to keep all hairdressing professionals following the guidelines. Hashtag do it right. Chief Executive Hilary Hall states, the impact on our industry would be devastating. Please do your bits and help and show you're putting the industry first as well as protecting the safety of your teams and your clients. And that's all from me today for the World of Hair News. Whoa, some big topics there, Jordana. Really good. I think one on those you, you was the recruitment and the stats that you come up at. Uh, I, I want to go into that a little bit later, actually. But I think the first thing, this Do It Right campaign. Oh, are we all getting drained of this conversation that keeps going on, but it's changed? I mean, what about you, George? What's, what's your thoughts on all of this? Yeah, I mean, I'm getting drained on it, to be honest. I think we all, you know, anyone that really wants to continue operating and continue going knows the kind of score. But I do know that a lot of councils have been putting out false information in terms of you only need a mask or a visor. So I think there's just a level of confusion. I think it needs to be a lot clearer. Um, but I just want to go to work and get on with my job and just do my job and I'm just pleased to be at work. So I think the information is quite um, still quite confused, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, there's a question that I'm going to ask all you guys and girls watching. Are the salons around you all seeming to go by the right way and i'm talking particularly about england again i'm sorry i know it's very different in different parts of the uk but in here in england are you seeing your hairdressers and barbers around you wearing both the visor and mask just put simple yes no because it you know for me jordana I, i've got to be honest i'm getting quite unsettled by the amount of hairdressers and barbers that i'm seeing that aren't doing this right. And I'm doing it right, 
you're doing it right and I'm sure yeah. the percentage of people and I'm already seeing here no 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 however uh, I don't think that's that's ever to be used as you know a distraction from what we're doing we just need to focus on what we're doing you know we never know that we might be peering into someone else's shop when someone's just put the visor up and they've forgotten to take it down. We don't know if they're doing it on purpose. Either way, let's focus on what we're doing because hopefully all of us collectively can do it right. Yeah. Um, I'm just oh. not up for calling people out at the moment because there's too many people to call out, to be honest. <laughs> well, I'm just looking here. Emma Jarvis, thanks. she says it's driving me crazy. Uh, I've got to, It is driving me crazy because, look, the realities of this is... No, I'll tell you what, I'm going to take a step back here, George. There was a great post in the community by Sophie Ship, right? And she, she'd been in touch with her council, right? And Sophie was putting a great post in. And they came back to her and said, no, look, you, you don't have to wear a mask and a visor. This is the problem, because that council was wrong. But it caused so much debate. Yeah, and it also caused Sophie, she was trying to do the right thing, and it also caused a lot of hairdressers to be quite negative on that post where really you know that's just that's just wrong information it's not sophie's fault i know so she'd never put out any information that was wrong or she'd never try and not help people and this is what i mean i think that there's so much you know there's just there, there is just there's so much confusion surrounding it and also you know what people like to revel in negative news i don't think I, let's talk about the economy and how badly affected the economy will be if we shut down again so people like to say we're going to shut you all down but in actual fact you have to look at the country and the state that it's going to be in so and, and that leads me on to saying kels jordana is actually there has been serious threats and the nhbf have been saying it that if we do not do this right then we will get closed down again could you yeah. afford another lockdown Absolutely not. Um, I was really honest last week with my business. I, at the rate we're going, it, it just it, the future is not bright for us at all. And I've spoken to a lot of other central London salon owners, and they have respectfully told me the truth as well. It, it, the numbers are awful. And I think the further you are out of London or the suburbs, suburban areas, I think you, you might be cashing in a bit more because people are not travelling to London to their workplaces which is where they would normally have their hair done so at the moment absolutely not we could not survive another lockdown um but only time will tell um whether they're yeah. going to close us down or not yeah let's just said here george there are a couple of occasions that i've asked my clients is that okay if i take my visor off as i couldn't focus due to the heat when cutting uh, let me bring that back up let hi let by the way it was last week when it was so hot but now back yeah. on both um it's difficult. I've, I've done the same. I've done the same on a couple of occasions when I have not been able to see my blend, or especially if I've cut gents mm -hmm. and I'm blending the sides. I've really struggled to see with my mask and visor, and I've said, would you mind if I just blend this side? Yeah. might be illegal, I know, but I'm just being truthful. Yeah. Um, what's everybody's thoughts about the council? Have, have you guys, girls, been in touch with your local council? What sort of feedback have you been getting? Also, has anybody had a spot check? I'd be really fascinated. So again, yes, if you have. No. Uh, Jordana, have you had a spot check from your local... I had a couple of... I thought they were mystery shoppers. We had it last week. A few people came in, looking around, taking pictures, which I thought was a bit strange, and then quite a few people hovering around the front of the salon because we've got glass windows so you can, you can see through. And I just thought something doesn't sit right with me. They didn't look like clients that were browsing for a hair product. And I thought maybe they're mystery shoppers, maybe hired by the council or maybe they're, you know, local local salon, I don't know, staff members who are coming to check in to see if we're doing what they're doing. I don't know, but it was a bit weird. Yeah, well, Colette, who's going to be sharing a great video by the way we're going to be putting it on youtube and facebook she's done a really really strong and she, i know she's been at the front and uh, salon owners united uh, the whole of the business industry faces the same threat we just need to take control of our industry and you know this is going to take us on to recruitment really in a bit george but yeah you know, we, we, we have to portray the best professional image and I worry that some, you know, and I'm not going to, like what Jordana says, you can't call out certain salons, but 
they've got to butt their ideas up because there's just too many, and I'm afraid I'm going to say it, that, and I think there are some brilliant barbers out there, top, top barbers, but there's too many that have come in that have just done the two weeks course, and I, I've got to, I'm singling out barbers because I've seen it a lot in barbers. It seems to be a lot of this young lad culture that, you know, I'm all right. For me, I have to say, I think it is, when you're wearing a visor and a mask, surely I'm protecting my client, aren't I? When I go out, and equally the client's protecting me by wearing a mask, and if you're not doing that, what does it tell you about you? Selfish. Mm. You're, what a selfish individual you are. So stop being selfish and putting it down by your chin because you're uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean... Are you hot on that with your staff, George? Yeah, I mean we do, we do wear, we do wear mask and visors. Um, all of us do, but I just, you know, the odd occasion, especially like when I said I've done a bit of barbering, I've have just had to lift it down slightly so I can actually blend the line. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna walk around town looking like you've got a bowl on your head. Just, just saying, <laughs> you know what I mean? I but I, I completely <laughs> understand what you guys are saying, but I think there's a lot of hairdressers that will say no. But I'm saying it's not very practical. I've never ever taken it off because I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. I've taken it off to just create a blend. I, I've got to say, I've just off. seen this comment. She does make me laugh. I keep flagging her up, but she just makes me laugh. Sophie, again, I'm going to fit a cow dip for clients to walk through before entering. There you go. <laughs> That's the way forward, Sophie. <laughs> Miss Sass. So, look, anyway, we're not going to hover around this too much again. Uh, most of you are all saying no spot checks. I don't think I've seen anybody that's had a spot check has anybody actually had anybody with coronavirus over you know anyway let's not go on about coronavirus well, yeah, let's move on from that bloody <laughs> subject that? but anyway do it right i think just follow the campaign is what we'd say so um let me give you a clue what's coming up george <laughs> <laughs> so is that is that the next the next section? Are we on to the hairdressing horror stories? <laughs> hairdressing horror stories. Well, I can't wait, guys. I've got three corkers for you. I'm guilty of a couple, so I do hope you enjoy. Here we go. Hairdressing horror stories with Georgia Bell. It's not really a ghost, it's just me. I'm back for this week's hairdressing horror stories. So guys, I've actually got a few horror stories that have happened to me and my salon over the last few weeks that I thought I was going to share with you today. So the first one was you know when you have those clients that are just mentally draining and actually get a feel, when you get them feels? We had one of those clients this week and actually my gut instinct should have said, no, we ain't doing your hair. But we went with it anyway and we did everything we could to please her. So the first inspo pick after consultation, at a point when she showed me, was a metallic -y strawberry blonde. Even though there's no such colour as a metallic -y strawberry blonde. Then the next inspo pick was a dark auburn, and then the next inspo pick was a rose gold. So I decided she loved the strawberry blonde. I decided to do a bleach out to a level 10. It wasn't my client, but I was helping my stylist because I could see how nervous this client was making her. So we bleached out to a level 10. We got the colour book out. Bearing in mind, my colour book has got 10 different coppers, peaches, rose golds, strawberry blondes, you name it, we've got it. Didn't like a single one. So I said, no problem. I'll get my pivot point swatches out for you. Now you all know, if any of you have you got some pivot point swatches, you know how expensive they are. 16, 16 bespoke coppers I made for everything from strawberry blondes, metallic rose gold, peach, copper, everything that you couldn't even get in my book. And guess what? Didn't even like a single one of them. Then upon rinsing the bleach, she then showed me another inspo pick. We finally decided on three colours because it was multi-tonal. Went out, loved it. Next day, complaint, hated it. And you know what? In situations like that, guys, there is nothing you can do. It wouldn't have even mattered if it was the best hairdresser in the world doing her hair. So I'm guilty of the next one as well, guys, actually. Um, so, you know, the town where my salon is, Rotherham, it isn't the best of areas, and I ain't gonna lie. So at the beginning of the week, we were cashing up, and this guy... God knows what he'd been taking, but it was definitely something that isn't legal. Came up to my window and he was basically just licking it, like he was so out of it. So I said like, what are you doing? 
move away. So he was just like looking worse and worse every time I looked at him and he wasn't moving and he was licking my window even more. And so my assistant decided to put the metal shutter down to deter him away from the window. Now you would think if a metal shutter is about to hit you on the head, you would move, but no. No, he didn't move. <laughs> and he conked him on the head and then he just started getting really angry and we need, we almost had to call the police to move him away from the salon. Luckily, we haven't seen him since. So this one is a bloody corker and I've got to admit, it made me laugh. I am not guilty of this one this week. Can you imagine doing a gent's haircut and somebody that looked rather worse for wear was outside and you said, to your gent, it was hair you're cutting. God, have you seen state of that outside? And he turned around and said, that's my wife, oh my God. So guys, I have started um, adding a bit of a hairdressing criminal element into my hairdressing horror stories. Now the last story was about Sweeney Todd. Now, I was struggling to find a criminal hairdresser this week, but I did think about a crime that was committed at a hairdresser's and actually this was a local salon to me it happened 20 years ago though and it was in the market and it was i can't mention the name of the hairdressers because he might be really mad at me for saying but basically a woman was in that hairdresser's getting her hair permed and her abusive ex-partner came in and blew her head off with a shotgun can you bloody imagine that all of the staff had to have counseling um, and then another interesting thing about the salon owner, a few years later, he was in a car accident and he lost his right finger and he had to retrain all over again at 55 to cut hair left-handed. Oh, George, I, I'm just watching all the tears. Ryan, he's howling. Stop. Where? Where do we start with that? I mean, God, first we want to attract people into the industry, not pull them off. God, get their <laughs> head blown off. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we won't know, put that one out as an industry message. It is, yeah, so bad that, isn't it? I can't uh, believe that actually happened 20 years ago. Yeah. So, that's crazy. But yeah, never a dull moment in terms of um, some of the hairdressing horror stories I receive every week. So remember, guys, if you've got any, then please make sure you slide into our DMs and tell me. <laughs> well, I, I think Amy's going to do that. Oh, my God, you've just reminded me of one. I'll slide into your DMs. You do that, <laughs> Amy. That'll be, uh, that'll be good. Uh, and I must say, I must come to Rotherham for a, a, a relaxing weekend. It sounds wonderful. <laughs> the, the locals in the high streets. I can show you some sites, Tom, let me tell you. Uh, do, do you get this down on Kensington High Street, uh, Jordana? No, no, not so much. We have had a few people groping incidents sort of outside the salon, which was horrendous. The, uh, yeah, there's just people around Kensington who look really, really normal, but then when they walk past you, they'll grope you. And, and there were like three groping incidents in the space of one week about two years ago. It I was told horrendous. Jez Barnett to stop wandering around. <laughs> <laughs> Jez, I don't mean it really. We love yeah. Jez. It, it's, uh, but look, there, there was a serious one really there, George, and you, you you actually shared that with us in our WhatsApp group about your client experience, and and it does lead me on really to you know serial bad clients. I mean, we've all got them, and. Our experiences, oh, yeah. you know, again, guys, girls, put those in, you know, tell us about your, those clients from hell, you know, what are they like? But that experience with a client, I mean, it, horrendous. How do you deal with that, George? Mental draining. Uh, do you know how I dealt with it? Because yeah. I, I, I knew a complaint was coming because it, I don't think it would have mattered if you were the best hairdresser in the world. I knew that complaint was coming and, you know, a mother was so abusive down the phone to us the next day. I just said, you know what, send her the money back because it, there was no winning it. And I think actually what my advice would be, I'm quite an experienced colourist. Um, I'm quite um, an experienced stylist so if i pick up on consultation that bad vibe if somebody ever says to me no one's ever got my hair right well darling i'm really sorry i can't do your eggs i ain't gonna get it right either and I, i'm very very open and honest and if i get a bad vibe i don't go ahead with it mm. and i think that that should have been done but i think that if a if a if a client chooses a slightly less um experienced member of staff then they don't say anything, but actually, why would I want to put the client through it? Why would I want to put my staff through it? Because the, the problem lies with it being indecisive and not actually know what knowing what you want. 
would you tell your client, Jordana, if you're in that situation, they're like that, and there's somebody that is just plain right horrible. They bring a bad vibe to the business. Mm. Do you actually just say, look, I'm sorry, we just can't take an appointment for you. We don't want you here. Very, very, very rarely. I'll always get to the kind of killing them with kindness first, and I always try and just get back down to their level and say, okay, you know, what is it that you, that is troubling you? Because it's clearly not the hair. And then kind of work way, work backwards psychologically. And we've only had to ban two people in the last, I don't know, six, seven years. So mm. I I always feel like once you meet them again, you can. there's always a way of winning them around. It, obviously, that client, George, sounded like one of those few people that you just can't win around. Um, but they are rare. They are very rare. And you can always call. You can always call them up once they've had a little bit of a time to think. Like I had quite a few Karens on the first couple of weeks of opening, and this one lady, she got her her sister to call call me up and abuse me down the phone, and I had to read it out the out the palm of my hand because I told her, look, get off the phone because number one, it's eight o'clock at night. Number two. Um, you're not calling as a client, you're the client's sister, so I would like to speak to the client. And then by the time I got the client back in, um, she was apologising because yeah. you just you just have to have that calling off period and get them back in. And if they are normal people, you can always win them round. But there's always that 2 3% of population that you just got to kiss goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you, yeah. I've got to bring this up, sorry. It just, again... If you see me snigger, I'm not sniggering at what you say, ladies. It's just I see comments come in and they, it's a naughty boy part of me. I, I, I do have that. Uh, uh, Rosalind, I once asked my client if she wanted her bob to shit on her shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Quality. <laughs> hey, well, that, that's good there. So, uh, yeah, just going a bit off track, but I had to. Um, yeah, picking up on what Jordana's saying there. George, you know, in, in dealing with people, it, that is the part of our industry where it's the strength of you as a, as a hairdresser, as a communicator, dealing with awkward people. You can turn a really horrible situation around where they become, you know, putty in your hands. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely, you can. Um, and I'm pretty sure that at Jordana's level and, you know, like I'm saying, experienced stylist, with turning it round is years and years of experience. So I know if that woman had been in my chair, I could have turned it round because I have a lot of backup. Do I Do I think that my my girl that's been on the floor for three years could turn that around? No. Do I think that that client's going to take advantage of it? Yes. So do I want that client in my salon? Absolutely not. Yeah, I'm just looking here. I've got Brooke. Hiya, Brooke. Um, had the exact situation picking on a graduate stylist. I called her out two weeks ago. This client was so rude, my graduate was crying. I asked why she felt it was necessary uh, uh, felt it was necessary to speak so rude, and she said her son had died the day before. What was I meant to say? Still no need to make a cry. That's a really good point there. Um, as much as we're dealing with you know, what can be difficult clients, Jordana, we never quite know what's going on in people's lives and and sometimes we just kind of we can assume that they're just plain, plain right rude but it, you know that is something we always got to take on board yeah and like angela's just put there i think sometimes the client has other issues in their lives and they are diff they're difficult because of that and i think that that's absolutely true so i think you've always got to look at that in consultation often it's the psychology and women want to change their hair because either something really good's happening to them or something really bad's happening to them. And I think you have to delve a little bit deeper. Mm. But with that, it takes experience. Yeah, I've, I've just, again, just picking up here, girls. So you don't, I've sacked off some clients in my 34 years, not many, but they've made my life hell in the past. Nobody wants their job to be hell because of somebody. And, you know, what are some of the other things that you would get, what you would call serial bad clients? And I think one thing that always comes up, Jordana, is the clients that don't show. <sighs> hey. I have little, little patience for this, but in, you know, the 40 years of Cabela, we've never had a cancellation policy until now. 
And it was when we opened after lockdown, I thought we have to do this. So rather than collecting money up front, which a lot of salons do, what we do is we don't collect any money up front, but we tell them if you do not cancel within 24 or 48 hours, whatever it is, notice, we will be charging you 25 pounds. And then the day comes, they don't they don't turn up. We call them and say, you've missed your appointment. Can we collect the £25? And more often than not, they're like, do you know what? You're right. I'm really sorry. It's only £25 of maybe, let's say, a full set of highlights, which is a two-hour appointment. And um, more often than not, they do agree to pay it. But it still doesn't really actually fill the gap what that, that you've missed out on. But I do think it acts as a deterrent so i am glad that we've got it now and i haven't had anyone refuse to pay that even though they kind of are within their right because i couldn't actually knock on their door and ask for the money so yeah that's how we deal with it and it's just a little bit less admin collecting it after they've missed the appointment yeah Uh, i'm just gonna flag up again and just put a bit of humor on you obviously you're enjoying talking about some experiences that you had i think this could be for george's uh, hairdressing horror stories. Nicola, I had a lady who I shampooed in at the front wash when I was an apprentice, and she took her teeth out and started washing them in their basin. Oh my god! Nicola, you need to share some of these. Honestly, you lot, honestly. Maybe you should be writing that to yeah. me. Don't write on here, guys. Save it. Save it. And there's my man <laughs> and my podcast today. Hi, you, Andrew. How you doing? Classy, he says. Yeah, we've got a classy crew here. Really have. But yeah, I mean, look again. I'm just looking through here. You know, retailers. Let me just have a look. What's Colette saying? Retailers share details of shoplifters to local shops. Maybe salons should have a closed group in districts to share details of bad clients. Help each other that out. That is a good, good tip. Yeah. We used to do it in uh, with Rush and Tony and Guy on Church Street, which is in Kensington. We would pass around the names that have been, you know, looking for refunds or freebies, and it oh, worked good. quite well. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good idea. That's is, really is, good shoplifting, is shoplifting a problem? Have any again? There's yeah. a I put that out I'm into sure. the community. Yes, no, if you've had so. shoplifting. Yes. No, if not, have you had that, Jordana? We've had um, people have lifted. You know, nioxin hair pills, which are really good for hair growth. Yeah, they're fifty Didn't pounds Didn't work for a box. me, but yeah, I do know of them. And and um, we've had clients like actually take the tablets out of the box and put the box no. back. So when we've gone to count it, it's empty. We've had clients um, have the entire duration of a really big colour correction appointment, and then at the end have said, "Oh my God, I've left my card in my in my um, in my car." So then they give us a purse. To, to leave as a deposit if you like and say look I'm just going to nip to my car and I'll be back in two seconds and by the time they've gone to the car we look we open the purse and it's one of those like you know cheap sort of 99p purses that has nothing in it at all and they've legged it so yeah it happens quite a bit yeah what about yeah. you George yeah I once had somebody nick all the candles out of a toilet I don't know why um, were they scented crazy. candles though well, they were from they were like from the quid shop or something. Do you know what I mean? Scented candles, like nicked them all. Um, and then we don't. I've not really had many problems with shop lifting in the salon, but we do get an awful lot of shoplifters come to our door asking if we want to buy any steak or whatever, and we have to ban them. Yeah, I've just That's... seen here. This is. <laughs> Uh, Kelly, hey Kelly, uh, we had someone take all our GHD products at Christmas and paid with a fake credit card. Lost about five hundred pounds worth of stock. Oh, oh no. killer! Uh, so let's see how you, Christopher. God, sorry, I'll just read this, George, and we'll come back to yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, had someone rob some GHDs. He was on a push bike. My boss chased him down the road with scissors in her hands. Ha, ha, ha. She didn't catch him. No. Well, thank goodness she didn't. That could have been dangerous, actually, Chris. I'm surprised at the amount of toilet rolls that went missing just before lockdown, what people are putting. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, Mars, what were you going to say, Jordana? Sorry, you, you were just going to yeah, say Yeah, so the GHD thing happened to us a few times. So now we've got a ban, and we have a limit on the amount of ghds you can buy it's only three per person because of that because someone came in bought about seven and left and then it was a fake credit card yeah the worst oh yeah and how Ryan... does that go through with a fake credit card it just i don't know it just goes it works through. for me george not... i'll tell you later <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Ryan, uh, we didn't have security cameras. Okay, they don't stay up long enough, these messages. Installed until after lockdown. We have had Moroccan oil and Oplex products stolen from the window display, display but left the boxes there. Well, oh, yeah. well, there you go. Recycling the boxes. I always say, and I've got to be careful on this, and I'm sorry if you... But around where we are, we have quite a, a, a gypsy community community. Uh, sometimes it, i don't know if any of you guys have the gypsy community and um, lots of gypsies are very lovely people but there is that element of nervousness sometimes when you get a whole load of them coming in at the same time am i allowed to say that or not or is that a bit out of order no you're all right i think yeah Jordana? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no well, well, you know, I, I, I'm just saying. I, I could, I, I can look at Jordana and I'm thinking, mm, I don't know if I should be saying that word, but uh, we love them really. Uh, so we're moving on from that, uh, Let has just said some of my toilet rolls gone missing prior to lockdown in salon. Yeah, toilet rolls are a big problem. Right. Okay. So let's move on, shall we? Who wants a bit of hair? Yeah, we all do. We love hair. We love a bit That's of hair. Great. And this lady I had the pleasure to interview today for the podcast. What a joy, Cherie Thompson. She's becoming our featured rock up and share guest. And hey, good on her. She submits her stuff and we want to put it in there when we see it. So here's our rock up and share. And this is where we get our wonderful community to show what they can do with hair. So here we go. Rock up and share, Cherie Thompson. Hi everyone, I'm Cherie from Siren Hair Art. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come back onto the Rock Up and Share part of the hair show. I'm absolutely loving the show and all the inspiration that we're sharing here on this platform. Today I'm going to show you how I created this simple but very effective beautiful bridal pony. Thanks for watching. Thank you. 
So I hope you've enjoyed watching just how simple and easy it is to create a beautiful style just like this. Check out my Instagram, Siren Hair Art, and also click the link in my bio for my bridal styling online education. Thanks guys. Can we all just show our appreciation and give huge amounts of love hearts and a round of applause from us. Stunning. And also, Dan, what a great bit of music. That was very uplifting. I enjoyed that music. And by the way, all our videos and everything that you see, as well as that, what I mentioned about Colette's uh, video, you can see on our YouTube channel. So go and visit it, okay? We've got some great stuff on there, as well as our hairdressing horror stories. And this comment I'm going to bring up because it made us all howl behind the scenes when that was being played. Jason Churchill, is this like you look? You look like you're doing it very quickly, Jason. <laughs> Brilliant! Uh, that was that was quality. And and Cherie, she come back. And she said. Uh, it's one recorded and speeded up, so there you go, brilliant though. But actually, if you want to do a rock up and share, then, you know, we can't honestly keep saying this enough. Just simply email dan at howtocut.it, not .com or .co.uk, it is as it says, dan at howtocut.it. Dan will put the comments in, he's sat in Berlin at the moment, been watching this. Uh, what's Jason come back with? I was going to say, blimey, you're quick. Yep, absolutely. It did look amazing, didn't it, Kelly? I think, uh, um, yeah, just a great look. Master at work. Yeah, we need to get our masters at work. We have some going on. You know what these superstars are like, you know? They, they're all sort of got to get back into it. And I think we kind of reach out, don't we, George, to people and... I, I'm getting a sense that everybody's starting to want to get back into a bit of that creativity again as we get yeah, settled I mean, in. We, we want to see your ideas, we want to see your inspirations. Um, and also, guys, I don't know if you if you look in the comments below, Dan's just put it, um, our YouTube up. So if you could all give it that a subscribe and a like, that would really help us this evening as well. And we, of course, put all our content onto YouTube. So if you do want to go back and watch something, it's all there for you to see all our how-tos, all our masters at work. But yeah definitely get your submissions into us yeah and she said effortlessly beautiful and as i say i did interview sheree today for the podcast uh great conversation as it's always been and we, we have wonderful conversations um yeah so i'm looking forward to sharing that now before we move on because you know we're moving along you know if there's anything that you guys girls want to talk about then put the questions into the comments. Have you got a question for Jordana, uh, George, myself? Then, you know, want to hear. But the, a topic, and Jez, I could just see who's just popped up here. I know he's very hot on this one, is recruitment, Jordana. Uh, you mentioned it in the news about some of the stats. Just take us back over some of the things that you found out in there and just highlight a couple of those bits because I, I want to talk off uh, a couple of those things that you brought up in the news. So for me, the most staggering, staggering uh, percentage was 45% increase of hairdressers and beauty salon businesses between 2017 and 2020. And obviously that means that we're all competing. There's a salon and a hair barbershop every third store in central London. So we're, we're competing for clients like we've never seen before, which means that maybe the weaker links or the slightly older salons or the slightly unstable salons are going to close. And for me, I think, I think that's the biggest change I've seen because a lot of my, you know, when my parents tell stories about their, you know, their hairdressing days, it's really, really clear how different it was. And the power was really in the hairdresser's hands. Whereas now we are, try we are just getting every client that we can. And every client to us is like gold dust. We don't have the opportunity that we're used to where we can turn people away or we're so busy that we can't fit you in. Mm. Um, it's just not the way things are anymore. There may be people who still pretend it's like that, but I can guarantee you that when you have an honest and frank conversation with any salon owner, they'll say the same thing. Competition is so high and it's scary. So every time I get people selling to me, you know, I'm opening a salon, I'm opening a business. When I say good luck, I really mean good luck because it's tough. It is really tough. Yeah. And if you're going to do it, have a good old think or chat to your boss and maybe have 
some kind of partnership thing like what John Lewis do you know you can be a stakeholder or something like that but if you if you're doing it on your own you need you need to really think about it because it's it's a big journey and particularly with you know these figures might increase who knows in 2021 there'll be even more salons we don't know and then the second thing that i really picked up on was there's a right there's a drop in of 13 percent uh, in overall applications for the hairdressing apprenticeship scheme now on my stories today on instagram i put the um, the journey to my destination which is a documentary that sally brooks who's ex-british hairdresser of the year has released and it's a really really cool documentary and the purpose of it was basically to kind of encourage young people in hairdressing to join and it was to show you the weird and wonderful things that hairdressing can take you and the places it can take you as well and it's not just about life behind the chair so if you can have a have a watch of it it's on amazon prime um i think it's free if you've got prime but if you haven't then you have to pay i think 2.99 it's a really good documentary and i've been taking it around to the local schools because it's such an easy watch and um it's got some really cool hairdressing names in there as well mm. i mean this is important isn't it george i mean uh, again uh, just yes or no are you got problems recruiting right now whether that's stylist apprentices put that in the comments here let us see are you having issues with recruiting um i think how we promote the industry and there has been lots of different schemes about talking about you know the the different pathways my podcast you've got uh, creative head the industry what they're doing and journey to my destination lots of people are doing this and they're trying to promote the industry but is it really getting over the real message, George? Well, I, I mean, I'd have to say, you know, I think there's less and less that, that you know, empl employed salons are on a slight decline, aren't they? And there's more and more freelancers. So if we've got more and more freelancers and people going freelance and self-employed and stuff like that, who's going to be training the assistants? That's the thing. Um, and I also want to speak about school leavers. You know, sometimes I think, and I'm not saying I would not welcome it's taken me a long time to find my apprentices the right apprentices for my business um, and I think that maybe it shouldn't be a simple case of doing a college course I think it should be more I think there should be like two years on the salon floor after that and actually I, I just find a lot of young kids they get up and go has got up and gone and I don't and sometimes I don't think that they're mentally equipped to be in a in a busy salon sometimes mm. i find it very difficult and sometimes as a business owner i would rather take on an older apprentice and pay more than have somebody at 16 that just hasn't got that maturity or you yeah. know confidence about that's them. really interesting you said that because i actually had somebody dm me and uh, who was an older hairdresser wanted to get into apprenticeship and she wanted my advice on what my thoughts were and i actually just said exactly what you said but unfortunately salons don't want to pay for older apprentices Giordano isn't that the case and you know it, it it seems to stop older people coming into the industry because of that problem well you say that but actually at any age if someone joins you as an apprentice so long as you're paying them above minimum wage for the first year you can get away with still you know in in guidelines with the apprenticeship scheme but it's after that first year is up, that's where you have to put their, their prices right up to above minimum wage. Um, and it's and it's kind of, it gives you a year to think, are they, are they worth it? Is there a potential partnership here? So I don't have problems taking on older staff members, but I also do think that we, it's our duty of care to make sure that the 15 year olds or the 16 year olds who are coming in don't necessarily get a free ride but that we adapt to the way they, the way that they work now. They, they're not going to come there with a work ethic. They're not going to start from day one with the best attitude. We have to coach them, and sometimes you just have to give them that extra, extra help, extra mentorship, or sometimes three or four chances, or six or seven disciplinary meetings, if that's what it takes. Um, because personally, I have found doing that and sticking by them does pay off sometimes <laughs> mm. and especially when you know you know you know that they're not coming in you know that the applications are not coming in thick and fast so i always try and work with what i've got because you never know when the next application is going to come through 
Yeah, I'm just going to pick this one up. Hiya, Saffron, how you doing? She says, I can't find any good experienced stylist. I'm now home growing my own, got three apprentices at the moment. Great idea, George, if you can do Amazing. that and get them all the way through. Yeah, hundred percent. I think if you want, if you want to create, especially, especially if you want to create a brand, the only way to do that is to home grow. Because I think if you're looking for experienced stylists, the problem is, you know, we are hairdressers, we are divas and dudes, right? So if you've got an experienced stylist, with that can come people setting the ways, not willing to change, not willing to do the techniques that the business is doing. So yeah, I think homegrown is the way forward, but it can be quite financially difficult. Yeah. And you can see a lot of years paying a lot of apprentice wages and you know, living on pot noodles yourself. It's not all that sometimes owning a business. I'm gonna really put it out there. Hard. What could a really good, successful stylist be earning? I, I don't actually what what is what could an experienced hairstylist in a good salon be earning? What employed or self employed? Employed. I reckon good money. I'll just good money. Good money. But not, well, what's good money then? Much. Come on. I I'm I'm interested. I wanna know. I wanna know if I wanna come and work with you guys. <laughs> I'm not saying you guys actually, but what is a good wage for a hairdresser? I'd say anything above for london if you're taking above two and a half grand then you're doing well per month mm. okay well, since, and i would say since opening one of my top earners is earned nearly nine grand and he's self-employed and he, he takes 60 yeah. percent of that so that's pretty good this is the problem isn't it well it's a, is it a problem or it, it does look again this is a big big topic and it's one we can talk about self-employed the rise of self-employed hairdressers are becoming greater. And is there a reason because there is maybe a bit more freedom, as they see, and they can earn greater money than maybe being employed in salons? I'm not saying that's the case, but you just saying that, George, it's sounding to me that the self-employed hairdressers are earning some good money. Mm. Yeah, 100%. And, and they do, we do a lot of training together. We work as a little... We do work as a little team. We're always showing each other, and you know, I think there's a lot more self-employed uh, places that are doing that. Having said that, you know what? I would, I would love to employ. I would love to employ, mm. um, and I think the next few people I take on, my apprentices are going to be coming on as an employed basis because I feel like if you really want to make a difference and you really want to create a family, and you really want to create a brand, and I'm not saying my my self-employed lot don't do that because they do. I think that employed is a good business structure, mm. but it's just harder financially. Yeah. What, what, harder. what do you guys yeah. think? Are you for self-employed, employed? I know when I interviewed Matthew Sutcliffe, and we've referenced Matthew quite regularly from Tint, and I quite liked his approach that you... I think he started off with actually employing, and it gives you the option to then become self-employed as a promotion within your salon is is mm. this it's quite a professional setup because this is the problem with self-employed it has this reputation of being just back alley prof, unprofessional um, but there it seems to me that it's growing up jordana self-employed and that's you know our our salons doing it correctly and doing it the right way well i would say I would say personally, it should be um, a benefit that you 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 earn. So perhaps you were you start as employed at a salon for let's say four or five years. You build up your clientele. You soak as much from that salon as possible, and then when you hit that ceiling, which everyone does around the age of thirty-five, you, you'll get to art director level. You can't increase your prices any higher. Where can you go? You deserve a pay rise every couple of years or every year. You deserve a pay rise. So the only place you can go is if you switch to self-employed and you could literally be in control and take a lot more money than you are because we're saving on that 20% PAYE contribution and, of course, there's lower tax, thre tax thresholds. So that, for me, is the way to do it. You hit a ceiling price, then they get the benefit of becoming self-employed with you. 
Yeah, I'm just going to yeah. flag up here, Robert. Uh, her, I'm actually doing my salaries now. My employed staff member is going to be paid eight and a half thousand pounds. Yeah, can I go work for Rob, please? Rob, I tell <laughs> you, my man, we're all queuing. It, it's you know you've got to and, and Andrew here. Hey, Andrew, uh, got to pay top dollar uh, for self uh, for employees, or they will go self-employed, and rightfully so. You can't argue with that, can you? No. You know, you, you you just, and and I think also while we're on it, and I've got to bring this up, and I've, it's the pathway in our industry, right? This I think is a problem. If you're an architect, right, and you work for an architect, and you you stay in that job because you generally it's quite hard for you to go home and start designing houses for your mum and your aunt and all her friends, and before you know it, you're just doing it at home. You, the jobs are quite rare does that make sense but i think sometimes with hairdressing and barbering uh, there are always opportunities you know if you do lose a job you can quite easily go and find a place somewhere else is that a fair comment george yeah i think you know what we we've all it's a trade that you can literally take anywhere isn't it um but i do feel like do think people like to feel part of something and I do think we are creative people so I do think it's nice to have that vibe where you're creating something together mm. yeah I mean, I don't... Like, take Rob Salon for instance he's just amazing at avant-garde and it's, it's like it, people are people are taking salons and they're creating a movement mm. and I do think that you know money money matters but for me money isn't everything and to be part of that movement I think is it's something really special, and I think it's something that you don't necessarily get in every industry. Mm. Look, I, I, I don't want to get too drawn because I can feel we're going self employed, employed. It, it's a dangerous subject because I think that there's advantages on both sides, and, and, and I think there is. I think it's really hard to sort of diss self employed and diss employed. It's about what actually suits you and a salon. It, it, I think ultimately it's about professionalism. That's what it's about. If you're professional, great. That's. For me, I'm, I'm more concerned about recruitment and I'm concerned about recruiting people into our industry right now with uh, us where Jordana. I have a question for George while we're on the topic, topic just before we move on. Um, Robert has said, I'm not for self-employed. You have zero control over your business and client experience. Would you say that's true, George? And if so, how have you overcome that? Um, yeah, I would say that, that, yeah, by law, absolutely, that's true. But we've been friends for a long time um, and we all get on and we've got a really close net team. Mm -hmm. So because we've known each other for a long time, um, I think when you're getting self-employed and you're maybe just recruiting people and you don't know them and you haven't built that relationship, we've been, we, we've been through three salons, some of us together, over the last 10 years. And I think that that makes a difference. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think that and makes what, a difference. What, can I be cheeky and ask what the going rate is for self-employed? What's the ratio that you, you split it between? Well, you can either do chair rental, or you can, which would be a flat, flat out rate for the day, or you can do a percentage base and I get 45% and they get 55% apart from my top earners, they get a little bit more and they provide everything, all the stock and everything for that. Mm. Cool. Okay, it, it, so if, if I was to join your salon, would I be able to use your products? No. Oh, yeah, uh, no, you, we do have a set of products that we agree on together, but we all get our own. Where are you going here, Jordana? I feel you're going somewhere with this. No, no. <laughs> Don't set me up on a, for a fall on this. <laughs> Look, again, you know, I've interviewed some incredible uh, owners of self-employed salons. And I, I've got to be totally honest, if I didn't have my own establishment and would I go and work for somebody or would I be self-employed? I would be self-employed mm. for me personally because I would be... Uh, it doesn't mean that I don't want to work hard or be part of a team or be part of training. I think that's a poor excuse. I actually think the vast majority... You're going to tell people like Carolyn Chapman that they're... Uh, Ashley Hodges that they're unprofessional they don't want to be part of the team it's nonsense and actually it's about the people you've got coming into your place so there is a place for all and you know we can talk about you know having control over self-employed business I, th I think you try controlling employed people as well so I'm sitting on the fence here I'm not honestly I, I think 
some people want to be their own people in control of their destiny. I think we just need to have better choices for people. I want to have better establishments for people that want to be self-employed. And, you know, they don't want to be back alley. They are passionate hairdressers who want to get trained. So... Um, We've gone into that self-employed. I didn't want to particularly go on that. I did want to ask, how are we going to recruit more people into the industry? Because that is a bigger picture. And I think we're going to have to hold that for another uh, week because it's a big topic. So, um, you know, has anybody found something that's really been successful for them in recruiting staff? I'd be really interested to know. Uh, Jordana, I feel like the teacher at the front of the class. Yes, Jordana, you may speak. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, since Sally came out with her documentary, I had zero juniors at one point, and I've got, there's 30 of us at the salon, so we were desperate. And I, I took the DVD and I went and booked myself into all the local uh, schools around my area in Croydon. Even though it's still far from Kensington, I just thought, I need to try this. So then I got into their career days and I did six visits around Croydon area um, in, over the space of like three months. And it was amazing. They gave me like an hour and a half slot. I literally played parts of the um, DVD, the documentary, and I did this whole workshop with them. And I talked about all the different things and the, the different places that a hairdressing or barbering career can take you. And I was talking to like year 11 or year 10. Um, so people that probably should, you know, be thinking about apprenticeships. And I got quite a few people um, come and actually do like a, a work experience day with me. And no, it didn't actually turn into full time employment because for whatever reason. But I got like three or four, day, three or four days of, of work experience. And I think I spread the message quite well. So that could be something if you're not too strapped for time to consider. I think we do need to go into local schools and inspire them because otherwise, what have they got to go off? And know? I'm going to jump in there, right? So this, and thank you, Rami. It's a great content tonight. And that's what we want is this is the hairdresser show. You know, this is for us to hang out and let's have our rants and raves here. You know, this is our place. We talk about schools and actually I think we get a lot of kids actually coming into hairdressing. I actually truthfully feel we are getting them in. I don't think we're doing a good enough job of actually keeping them. And I had a great conversation. She heads up the curriculum at a very good college. She got in touch with me and she wanted to talk to me. And she, she was saying that the problem is they're not getting engaged enough. So when you look at school leavers, quite often not. I'm not saying, look, Many of us go into hairdressing because we're passionate about it. But because we have to keep in education until we're 18, what am I going to do? Do hairdressing, okay? And probably a lot of them don't want to do hairdressing. So you lose them. Colleges lose them, lose them money. We've got to do a better job, I feel, of the ones that we get into the industry. Because you can tell all the kids in the world how wonderful it is. But if they go into a salon, and to be quite honest, it's absolutely dire, we feel like we're going to be lying to them. And there are lots of dire salons out there, George. Yeah, no, hundred percent. We've got a lot of competition. Um, there's a lot of salons around. Um, so yeah, there is. We've got to be. Got yeah. To have a good business model. Susan, hi Susan. Patrick, uh, Susan is part of the Patrick Cameron team. It's always good to have Susan here. Patrick has always presented motivational seminars in schools. Students loved it, and and I know Emma Brady. She does. She, the, uh, what's happened to that? Is that about choose hair campaign? Uh, I think that kind of is it still there? Yeah. Susan again says brilliant idea, Jordana. By the way, we are about twenty seconds delay, so I am a little bit later on there. But oh, it's a good conversation, isn't it, ladies? Yeah, it's a pretty good one. It's a good one. If you'd like... I'm learning stuff just reading Yeah, I, I mean, I've spent most of my night just looking down at the comments and that's where my eyes are. It's it's going down to there. Not down to George's cleavage, which sometimes <laughs> I look... So <laughs> you did say about that earlier, sorry. I told you I could be naughty. No, but that, that's where I'm looking. Uh, an easy way to be self-employed with hassle uh, property. Great stuff, great stuff. Um, we're going to come back to it. The, the time is ticking along. I'm completely lost. Are you enjoying the show again, guys? Is this the way forward? Uh, give us lots of love hearts. If you like this sort of topic, we feel it's more talk show based and we want to yeah, liquor it up a little bit with some nice hair stuff. And one of the things that we, you know, I do regularly is the podcast i'm very proud of the how to cut it podcast and we bring on 
amazing guests and I'm now videoing all my podcasts so anybody who's coming on my podcast now has to see my mug as well as we talk to them and uh, last week we actually interviewed a guy called Simon Townley. Uh, now many of you may know of Simon, uh, he set up the hair socials but there's a lot maybe that don't know about Simon's story and I didn't know a great deal about Simon's story until I was aware that he had an injury um, and he got in touch with me and said look I've been told I might not be able to walk again and th the conversation went further. Anyway George I, who was the person she said yeah he's, had, he's got a brittle bone disease uh, and I looked into it and his story, I tell you what, this guy is absolutely inspirational. If we stand and moan about masks and, you know, whatever that may be, you need to listen to people like Simon. So I'm going to play you a, a, a short clip from our podcast interview that I had with him two weeks ago. Uh, and he talks about his disability here. So please just stop and listen. And actually, if you want to inspire people into our industry, you just get people like Simon to talk to him because I tell you he is just the man so here's that how to cut it podcast that I had with Simon Townley two weeks ago last week's episode walking life and wanting to look normal and be normal I've then gone into hairdressing on a surface of bloody pure gloss on the floor and honestly, God, if you look at ours and me, we don't get home right well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you see snow and ours, I mean, and now all of a sudden marble floors are, are the industry's favourite and tiles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've now got to like, try and manage that. And I think I broke my arm on my first week of my first job in, in the proper salon. And I say proper salon like a job I wanted. Uh, and, and then I had to say to him, like, listen, mate, I can't work. Not in my leg. I said, I can't work. I broke my leg. But I, I, I want to come back if that's all right. Like, I'll be a week. I've just got to have an operation on Monday and I'll be back. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, amazing, mate. And, I, and I'm not here to bad mouth anyone, but I had a bad experience after that with that employer. But that kind of spurred me on. And like I said to you, that brought me on to having to have my own salon. And before we get into that, like the disability thing, I remember going to Russia. And this is no word of a lie. I brought my kneecap in May and I was flying out to Russia in June. And I remember thinking... There's no way I'm not going. I will go, whatever the thing is. So I'm going to have to go in my wheelchair. And I'm, I'm for your visual viewers, I'm stuck here. What am I stuck on? Yeah, but so I'm those that aren't watching, now. Simon is now just showing his wheelchair. So what we'll do, actually, Simon, is yeah. we'll share a picture of that maybe as well. So for, yeah, so for you know, just our listeners, our, our Patreon members will be able to see that. And uh, But, yeah, wow, okay, so there's that wheelchair and, okay. So... So I'm in Russia, right, and I'm in my wheelchair, and I've got my rucksack on, and I've got um, a big suitcase with all my stuff in it. You know the drill, every every session stylist has that kit. And I'm travelling in Russia, and I'm thinking, mate, it's a scary place in Russia. I don't know what we're going to do over here. And I swear to God, mate, right, I, I could not, from the minute I got to that airport, be on my own. They would not let me be on my own. There was people rushing over, taking my bags off me, doing everything that I hate. I don't want help. Uh, <laughs> okay. I don't I want get to that. help me. I get that I want to do you. it myself. I would struggle sweating up that hill before I asked for help. But I accepted the help because it, I'm in a foreign country. I don't know where I'm going anywhere. And they're putting me in the car. They're helping me in. They're doing this. And then I get to Russia, and I've took some serious painkillers now. And uh, I'm at the hotel for the England camp. And I don't want to wheel in that hotel and England think, oh, New barber here. Oh, he must have been here on Make a Wish or something. I don't want them to think that <laughs> they've, they've sent this disabled guy to fill his dreams. I'm there because I'm a good hairdresser. Yeah. So I had to. Uh, so I, I put my wheelchair in a tree outside the hotel, covered it up with some leaves and, and shrapnel or whatever it were on the floor, and, and then I've gone in and I've spent six hours on my broken knee on my feet cutting hair, uh, and I come back out and my wheelchair was wet through me. It had rained for the full six hours I was in there in Russia where there's no Uber taxis the Russian guy at the door doesn't know what I'm on about when I'm trying to ask for a taxi uh, but yeah that's the kind of like I said I, I never wanted people to know I was disabled I wanted to just do my job Do you know I'm sitting there fondly smiling uh, just bringing back all the memories with that interview with Simon because what a honestly the the man is brilliant. He, yeah, I think we called it. My ability is stronger than my disability, and 
I think that's exactly what Simon's all about. He doesn't want people feeling sorry for himself, but he has battled all his life through that and never once he actually wanted to keep it quiet George that he didn't want people I think even whilst doing hair socials and you know I think he just wanted to keep it quiet no I just think he's fantastic and I think he's got such a zest for life as well and it really you know he's not allowing something to hold him back and he's just going for it and you know he's not allowing if he can't do anything for whatever reason he's not allowing that disability to be blamed for it either so i just i just think he's i, I really think he's inspirational i've known simon for a couple of years now great mates with him and i think he's fab yeah really, and there really he was cool. doing the england team in the world cup he talks about cutting yeah gareth southgate's hair and he's you know honestly he's absolutely smashed it when it comes to men's hairdressing and doing these you know all these footballers and and that comes back jordana to this whole recruitment you know you put that in front of a young kid and say look this lad struggles you know with breaks all the time and yet he hasn't yeah. used that as any excuse just got on and really absolutely smashed it yeah absolutely and i think he's uh, exceeded his own expectations of um and his dreams and and i think often more often than not people like simon is quite rare to come across people like them because he has he has perspective and he has such a beautiful outlook on life and I think that's proportion to the fact that he's been through so much um, so it's definitely a lesson for us all to learn really he's yeah. a breath of fresh air yeah absolutely and if you want to check out that podcast yeah, on the podcast providers search how to cut it or yeah just go to how to cut dot it uh, and it's a great interview really really enjoyed that with uh, Simon um Okay, we're coming to the end. What another belt of shown. I, I don't want it to end. So, yeah, hopefully you're all enjoying this and you've got to keep this gospel going. I love all of you. We're, we're so fond of you as a community. We talk about you and every one of you now, we recognise your names. We know of you. We, yeah, This is a power of communities. I know we've got Andrew Dunn in here who's got the Weller community. And we talked in the interview, which I'll flag up in a minute, about, you know, this is so wonderful, isn't it, Jordana? It's how you bring people in, you know, as a community and you yeah. really start to connect with people. I feel like I literally know Lee already, <laughs> Susan, who's always watching, Jez, I've already met him, but there's so many people you feel like you can just voice note them or DM them and then you realise, actually, I've never met them. <laughs> yeah, but one day, guys, we'll meet again. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hopefully soon, you know, I'll keep, I've got my eye on that show, that event. It's going to happen. Um, yeah. I've got a couple of uh, boozers that I'm looking at, by the way. Uh, George, let, let's come towards the end now. So... Have you got things going on? I always like it to hear what's going on in your world before we Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're still quite, you know, we're still quite busy at work. It's starting to slow down a little bit now. I've got my uh, two academy dates that I've launched for my Balearge, um Academy and they're going to be the 2nd of November, which I've got two spaces left on that. Uh, and then the 11th of January. So super exciting. It's gone really well. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. I've um, got some training to do with the team. Um, and then I've got Colour World coming up, of course. Cool. Okay. Well, let's say goodbye to you, George. So, everybody, shall we all just say goodbye to George all together? Bye, Bye George. See you next week. Bye. So, uh, you, we can still hear you, by the way, George, if you sat there. So, if your children start running in, we, we've got you still on the sound on. Jordana, come on, fill everybody in on what's going on for you right now. So, I have um, written, well, written a few chapters of a book that I'm writing for the hairdressing industry and I'm pitching it to a publicist in the next couple of weeks so I will let you know how I get on with that otherwise I'll be at Colour World representing Weller so if you want your tickets to Colour World it's just a virtual event so you won't be attending but you'll be um, streaming all of the live colouring sessions from lots of different um, brands and lots of different artists so get your tickets guys it's for the 5th and 6th of September fantastic all right and jordana well lovely to see you as always so uh until next week take care until bye. next week see you later Cheers. bye bye, guys. bye right well there we go another show has passed by let me just bring that up because i've got to see so hopefully you've all enjoyed it tonight uh it's uh, I think it's the show's getting stronger and stronger and I think it's because we're finding our hook we're finding what you guys really like and actually it's the simplicity that you like I think you like all hanging out it's a place to come to on a Monday night certainly as we head towards them darker nights I think getting in and eight o'clock 
on with the uh, the, the device and yes, yeah, switch is on. It's great. So keep tuning in. Keep a look out on everything that we're doing in the How to Cut It hairdressing community, How to Cut It Facebook page. That's where we took put the notifications and then obviously social media, How to Cut It. Just keep a check out on that. And if you want to get involved in these shows, then... Yeah, I, I say it all the time, you know, reach out if you've got a video you want to maybe share and it's a great way of putting your, your spotlight on things that you're doing. So don't feel shy about it. We're supportive and don't feel people are going to be critical of anything that you do. It's all about showing a little bit about what you can do. So honestly, it's been just an absolute pleasure. I'm going to just flag up my latest podcast and uh, that's, uh, there he is, Andrew Dunn. I know Andrew's watching in tonight, so he's been bringing in comment. Andrew is the creator and admin for the Weller Professionals Global Hair Community and they invited me in to interview on their day uh, their community because they got over 30,000 so a little bit like what you see here it was absolutely incredible I had such a wonderful day talking to it and then we spoke to Andrew and we titled this bringing the world of hairdressers closer together and that's effectively what these groups and this is all about it's about bringing us all together so if you want to go and check out that interview with Andrew which we done live on air then you can find that on our latest podcast, um, howtocut.it slash EP165. So uh, let's take that off. But yeah, keep sharing it. Uh, I know Dan's just making reference again in the comments about our YouTube channel. Go and have a look. Go and check out our videos. Go and subscribe to the show. It's it's We want to really evolve that now, and, and we could put a lot of this stuff going in here. So uh, I'm going to have a look through so many of your comments, and we're going to flag them in at the end because we've got a great fin video to finish with. It comes from uh, Salon Owners United, Colette Osborne, who, again, is a big part of our show. Uh, and We're going to just flag up those comments. So thank you, each and every one of you. You are unbelievably appreciated i don't think you realize how much we value you and i can't wait to meet you all in person very soon at hopefully the hair show live when we bring you that so until next monday you know what i'm gonna say peace love and smiles all the way and let's go to a little video
just waste away One more time is all we need A bit of truth to face, not that innocent We know what we did I'm a sucker for your love 